Hey, this is Grant with Grant's Rock Warehouse, and tonight we're going to go with something a little bit different. We're going to talk about the West German Made in Japan Target CDs. Now, you're probably wondering, Grant, why, are, um, why in the world are we talking Target CDs? Well, back in the day, um, I got my first CD player. Probably, uh, I think it was in 1985, it was a Sony D5. So the Sony D5 was like a small little CD player that Sony brought out. They had like a, an upper end model, but they had like a small one. So that was like the first one. So in 1985, that's pretty early. So um, the first time I went to a music store it was uh, Music Land in Marion, Ohio, at the Southland Mall. Now, in 1985, there was probably a CD bin that was probably, oh, I'm going to say maybe six feet by four feet. And that's all the CDs they had in there. Um, back in 1985, the first CD I ever bought was Duran Duran Rio and the second CD was Hall and Oates Big Bamboom. There wasn't a whole lot to pick from but also during this time period uh, Warner Brothers or WEA Warner Electra Asylum also had CDs out so one of the first CDs I remember getting from that time period was Talking Heads, Little Creatures, um, and King Crimson Beat. So we're talking, we're talking 1985, so there wasn't much out. But what I remember are those CDs from that era. Now, the EMI stuff wasn't that great to look at, um, but the Warner Brothers stuff was really colorful, well-designed, and for some reason, you know, as we all did back in the day, we'd, we'd build up these collections and we might have needed money for college. So we would sell our sell our CD collection and we'd rebuy it. I mean, if you're in my age group, you you probably understand what that's about. Yeah, you remember those days. Of course you do. So anyway, the Target CDs, which I'm going to explain here in a minute how all that happened. Um, but you know, back in the day, we would sell our stuff, we would buy it back later, and we would do this process over and over again. So the original Target CDs that I used to have, Little Creatures, King Crimson, psh, I got rid of those. Um, but I do still have my original copy of Duran Duran Rio from then. So, you know, it's not a total loss. Um, but the Target CD, what's the story behind that? Well, you know, of course I sold everything and then I was at Used Kids Records in Columbus one day and I'm going through the bins. Oh my God, this is probably 25 years ago maybe. And I'm going through the bins and let's see if I can pull it. All right. Okay, I got it. I'm sitting here going through the bins and I come across this, the cars shake it up. And if you know anything about me, you know, I love the cars and I said, Oh my God, look at that. I just wonder, it's got a s frosted smooth sided case. That's a good indicator. All the early CDs had frosted cases. And they were very heavy duty. It's not like the shit that they have now. So I got this and I opened it up and I went, oh my God, look at that. It's an original West German polygram Target CD. I went, oh my God, I haven't seen one of those in years. In years. So I bought it and then all of a sudden, you know, I got interested in it. All right, go maybe a couple of years later, you know. I used to be on the uh, DCC chats where Steve Hoffman used to hang out. 
because he used to master for DCC. Um, they shut that down. DCC went out of business and they started a new company called Audio Fidelity. In the meantime, Steve Hoffman started St Steve Hoffman Forums. This was in 2002. So I went from the DCC chat to the Hoffman Forums in 2002. Now you're wondering, well, you probably wonder why they're called Target CDs. Well, what we're gonna do is go to the Steve Hoffman Forums. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna look at that. So let me, let me uh, get rid of this and let's go to the Hoffman Forums. Now check this out. Oh, wait, I need to share this though first. Because if I don't share it, you won't understand. Okay, here we go. So, we're going to go to the Steve Hoffman forums right now. Um, okay, if anybody knows this, I mean, I don't know who's watching this knows the Steve forum for forums, but it's an audio file forum. People talk about stuff. Back in the day, it was pretty much strictly audio files. But as time went on, I mean, it grew and grew and grew. And now they pretty much talk about anything. But let me go to the forums. Let me log in. Now, my name on the Steve Hoffman forums is Vinyl Rack. All right, so we're in. There's me. I've got my Matthew Sweet icon there. And what we want to do is go back to the long and winding threads from 2002. I know this sounds crazy, but this is what we're going to do. Let's click on that. Okay. Now here's all the threads that have been retired or threads that would go on and on and on. So they wanted to clean these out. So we need to go to right here, the last page, 89. We're on 89, we go clear to the bottom, and here we go is this thread that I started back in 2002. Oh, the colors, German WEA discs. So we click on that. Now the images aren't here anymore, but this is the thread that I started about the Target CDs, and there's Steve Hoffman. He said, oh, the other Grant, Vinyl Rec. Um, but yeah, this is the thread I started back in the day about these Target CDs. Now, at the time, these weren't called Target CDs. People just considered these West German polygram CDs. But I always thought that these things kind of look like Targets. So I happened to call them target CDs and it caught on. So now everybody in the freaking world calls them target CDs. I had no idea it was going to take off, but it did. But anyway, if you're on the Steve Hoffman forums, go into the long and winding threads and you can see where it all started out. So anyway, that's it. Let me go back to the other thing just to show you. Okay. Okay. Let me get rid of this. So there's that. So I'm not trying to gloat or anything. I'm just telling you how all this started out. Um, so I thought it would be fun because I still love the Target CDs. I love this. Okay, wait a minute. What's BM Volt says? I first noticed the Target term when I was entering my CDs and Discogs. What got my attention was the prices the first Van Halen was going for. Yeah. Now, let me say this. Back in 2002, none of these CDs were going for any money. You could pick them up cheaply. Now, once this started on the Hoffman forums, it spread like wildfire. Now, originally, all I was doing was posting stuff and saying, hey, this is a cool CD. Check it out, blah, blah, blah. And it just took off like it was unbelievable. Um, I would never have thought it would have taken off. 
but it did. But none of these CDs were going for any money. Now, if you remember in the early 2000s, CDs, you could still buy them and collect them and they would go for a good amount of money. The market is not what it used to be, you know? So I thought, oh, what the hell? Since I started this whole damn thing, why don't we uh, look at some CDs and talk about them a little bit? And it's not like I'm the guru of this. I mean, there was one time where I had a shitload of these CDs and I don't have as that many anymore, but I do have quite a bit. But I still love them and they're very nostalgic and, uh, you know, yeah, but, oh yeah, but that, uh, yeah, it's all my fault, BM Bolt, that we all started this. So why don't we just, for the giggles, just look at some. All right, I'm going to start out here. There's no particular order. But the thing with these early West German and Japanese CDs is that the different labels had different colors. So let's look at uh, Stevie Nicks for instance, now all these CDs, we're talking all these discs came out in between 83 and 85. 85 is when they changed the design to this boring, old, crappy look like this. Before they were all colorful and they had, you know, usually if the, the record had a certain font, the CD had a font. But then they turn to this. This is a 1985 Doors Waiting for the Sun. Boring, boring. I don't know why they changed it. They changed it. It probably, they're probably spending too much on ink. I'm just saying. But anyway, one of the first ones, uh, Belladonna, Stevie Nicks. So these uh, Atco ones, always seem to have this color scheme. So it would be a green target with a pink background. Almost always. Now, if there was an ATCO like a European pressing, I can't think of one, but it might've had a different color. But like I said, these only were around to like mid 85. Somewhere in 85, they changed it to that boring kind of look. But anyway, Atco, pink with a green target. So those were cool. Another one, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. Now, if you're looking, if you're in the bins and you're looking for maybe, you're looking for targets. One indicator is, if you can see this, you can see the catalog number here. It'll say US and Europe. That's a good indicator that it might be one of these West German CDs. Also, it'll have a smooth-sided jewel case. Now, one thing that's really cool about Fleetwood Mac Rumors is that this is pretty much a flat transfer. What you hear on this is the sound of the master tape. Now, the versions that came out after this, which were just a plain silver CD with black text, those were remastered. And they jacked up the bass and they jacked up the treble. Now those aren't flat. I mean, those are really bright. Now I can't speak for the remasters that even came out later. Um, but if you want to hear what the Fleetwood Mac Rumors Master Tape sounds like, not futzed, no maximized, just the master tape, this is what you want. And look for that design on the CD. That, my friend, is gold. This is what you want. No one's going to care about this. How geeky can this be? But, you know, I kind of like it. I heard you mention them on the Contrarians a while back, which uh, plagued my internet. So oh. I can't, I can't read that. I need my glasses. Well, anyway, let's look at something else. Now, this is an example of a Target CD that you don't want. It's pretty and all, but it doesn't sound very good. Again, I think it's a flat master, but it really needs proper mastering. So let me bring that up for you, just for giggles. Okay. Uh, 
All right, Howard Jones. This is a great record, but it's not a great sounding CD. It's very bright. There's no low end on it, but it's a pretty CD because these WEA discs were like European versions. Even though this is an Electra, this is on Electra, these were WEA CDs. So these were considered European copies. And they're cool. They've got that purple target and they've got that teal background. There are others like this. I'll, I'll throw them out when we get to it, but it's pretty cool. It doesn't sound very good, but it's still, I'm pretty sure it's a flat master. All you have to do is EQ it to your liking. It's good. What's more important to have a flat master and hear the tape as it really is or have someone's interpretation of it? I don't know. I'll, I'll just let that go. I don't know. Maybe let you think about it. According to Discogs, I have five target CDs, Neil Young Harvest. We'll get to that. Van Halen, Van Halen. We'll get to that. Jean-Luc Ponty. I've got that. And Steve Morris introduction. And Eagles Long Run. I've got all those. That Steve Morris is on the musician label. And I believe it's pink and gray. If I'm right, the background's pink, but the target is gray. I can't remember. I didn't pull that one. But, uh, yeah. It's cool. All right, that's Howard Jones. Let's look at something else. Okay, here we go. This is a good one. Foreigner Head Games. Now, based on my research, of course, Head Games came out in 1979. Like I said, Smooth Sided Jewel Case. This doesn't have a Smooth Sided Jewel Case, but it's got that catalog number that I mentioned. It's got a European catalog number and it's got a U.S. catalog number. If you're in the used bins, look for that. That's a good indicator. But this, based on my research, came out in 1985. Um, all the foreigner CDs all came out on Target CDs up until Agent Pro Provocateur because I don't think... What was the album after Agent Provocateur? Well, that album never came out because that, what was that, 87 or something? They quit doing the Target CDs by then. But all the original Foreigner CDs all came out with this type of label. And then, like I said, in 85, they changed over to the boring old silver with black text. Boring, boring. Here's another one, Foreigner 4. Four or four, very similar. But see what's cool about these Target CDs? They used to they used the Foreigner logo on them. They've got the Atlantic logo. I mean, it's cool. It says made in German West Germany by Polygram. I love this stuff. It's just so nostalgic for me. I still love them. And you really can't go too wrong with any of these Target CDs as far as sound quality. Because compared to anything that's mastered today, none of these are brick walled. They're, like I said, they're pretty much flat masters. They're great. And they're fun to look at. And the thing about these polygram CDs, they're built like tanks. They're very thick. It's not like any new CDs you see now, which are very thin and flimsy. I don't know. Just crazy. Let's move on to the doors. Now here's... Let's see if I pulled the right one. Well, let's pop over to this one. Here we go. Same kind of deal. This doesn't have the European um, catalog numbers because I don't think the door CDs ever did. There's really no rhyme or reason for this. But all the Electra CDs look pretty much like this. Unless there's like a... There is a variation of this where it was maybe a misprint. I don't know. But it's the opposite. It's got like a silver black background with uh, red text or black text. I can't remember. I used to have one years ago. But as you can see, it's got the old Electra logo on it. Silver text on a red CD. This was very straightforward. This is the way the Electra CDs looked. 
And another thing I could say, like if you look at the rear inserts, a lot of the inserts will say printed in West Germany or Japan, depending on where these original CDs were made. But let's look at another door CD. All right, this is another door CD. It looks like the other one, but I believe the inserts here say printed in Japan. Now, like I said, not all these Target CDs were German. Some of them, like this one, was pressed in Japan, and I think this is made by Sanyo Japan. So it's just black on silver, nothing too impressive. Uh, the other thing I should mention is don't forget, during this time period, this is way before we even started pressing CDs in America. Everything was coming out of West Germany and Japan. We had no pressing plants in, a, in a, the States until like 1985. So these all predate that. Um, when I was doing research, most of these say uh, the doors were, they started pressing these in 83. So these are pretty early. These are early. And a lot of these CD cases say patent applied for on the, the back. We're like on an archaeological dig here, people. I'm just telling you. Let's look at something else. Well, anyway, there's the doors, Japan. I should have pat I should have popped that up, but I didn't. You guys understand what I'm talking about. Now, this is an example, since we're on the doors, of a 1985 CD that totally missed the Target CD era. Like I said, they quit doing these in 85. So we've got Doors Waiting for the Sun. Uh, this is also made in West Germany by Polygram. I mean, it has a similar look where the hub is all silver. There's no difference in the quality of these. Um, it's true. I, yeah, I am a dinosaur pretty much. Thanks for those kind words. Just reminds me. Um, but anyway, silver all through the CD. Were these any different? No, this is pretty much a flat master. Probably. I don't know what tapes I used. Could they be LP masters? I don't know. I'm not a mastering engineer, but this is where it all ended. So really we only have like a span of like two years and a half or two years total, maybe three years total. Let's look at something else. Like I said, I have a whole bunch of these, but how about this, Neil Young? Foam. All right, how about this? Okay, this is gonna be kind of fun. Neil Young Harvest was one of the first Neil Young albums to ever come out on CD. And based on my review, on my research this came out in 84 and of course of all the neil young albums what ones are they gonna was warner brothers gonna pick when they're doing this whole when they're starting with cds they're gonna pick harvest that would be his big seller so this is the first one it came it was a west german on uh it says made in west germany by polygram now for the most part most of the warner brothers cds look like this Silver background with a red target. There were some that might have uh, deviated. There is a version of Neil Young Harvest with the Reprise logo where the Warner Brothers logo is. I've got one of those. I should have pulled it. That would be a fail. But um, this is, again, one of the first ones. Now, this is a kind of a rarity. As we moved to CD production in, the, in, in like 1985, PDO or Polygram had a factory in the States. And they too started, there's not that many of them, but this is indeed a Neil Young Harvest CD made in the USA. There's not many of these going around. I can tell you that 
they pressed uh, Howard Jones' Dream Into Action in the U.S., and they did Roxy Music Avalon. There may be others that I can't think of all off the hand, but yes, because they, they, they pro probably only did this maybe a half a year. But yeah, this is a made in the USA Target CD. Let's look at some more. I got way more. You're probably going to get bored. Here's another one. Dire Straits. And from what uh, this, of course, the first Dire Straits album came out in 1978. It too says Made in West Germany by Polygram. Now this pressing, I think is probably an 85 pressing because the earlier pressings had like a silver band around the edge of the CD. So if you would look at the CD like this, there's a silver band that goes around it. This doesn't have it. All the Dire Straits CDs I've ever seen do not have the silver band. So I'm assuming this is a later pressing, probably 1985. Doesn't matter, it still sounds great. Uh, the inserts on here say printed in West Germany. Smooth sided jewel case. Um, this one I had found in the cheapy bin. Looks like I got it at half price books for a buck. It's like I always say, buy low, kids, buy low. Let's look at something else. Okay, here's another one. Dire Straits Communique. It's got this frosted jewel case. It doesn't have any European numbers on here. Like I said, not all of them do. But this is a made in Japan Target CD. So you can look at the image. It's got a gray back, silver Target. The, the J Japanese ones aren't quite as, I don't know, glamorous as the West German ones. But um, I think this has a silver background. Some of these West, these Japanese ones will actually have a gray background and not like a metallic silver background. But every once in a while you'll see these, but I think for the most part you see West German targets. Either way, you're going through the bins, always feel the top, and if it's smooth, you might have a keeper. The other thing I should mention is that those frosted jewel cases kind of went out when the Target CDs went out so i think probably the last i'd ever seen a frosted jewel case was like 1987 but always look for that it's a good indicator let's look at this doobie brothers minute by minute again another another warner brothers cd uh based on what i know it looks like it's probably an 84 85 silver background Red Target, all these Warner Brothers CDs look like this for the most part. Uh, it doesn't have any European catalog numbers on here. Uh, however, it does say printed in West Germany. Again, there you go. This one doesn't have a smooth sided jewel case. You never know how, you know, maybe the jewel case is replaced. I have no idea. Now, here's one that's kind of weird. Here is the best of the Doobie Brothers. Now, what's weird about this, as you can see the image, it has no background, it's a black target. It is made in the USA, but it's a Columbia Record House version of it. I know no other CD. Now, someone may be able to correct me. Like I said, I'm not the guru. Why does my phone keep going off? Anyway, I don't know of any other record club CD that they ever produced with this type of design. This is the only one that I know about. Um, I've heard that some people think that, you know, this is readily available, but I've only seen this once out in the wild. Now, you might be able to get it on Discogs or eBay, but... You'd be hard pressed to find this in the wild. Uh, let's look at this. Let's look at 
Oh boy. Did I even bring this graphic up? Um, I didn't do this graphic, but let's talk about it. Roxy Music Avalon. Such a great record. I mentioned that for Avalon, they did press Made in USA CDs. This is a Made in USA Avalon CD. The only reason I know that is the case is because it doesn't say anything on it. Down at the bottom, it usually says Made in USA or Made in West Germany, Made in Japan. This has nothing. So, what I understand is that this is a Made in USA because it doesn't say anything. How do I know that? I don't know. Steve Hoffman forums, probably. All right, let's look at something else. Um, oh, this will be good. Let's look at uh, The Doors, L.A. Woman. Again, this CD came out in 84. All, all the uh, Doors albums came out with this design, except for Strange Days, which I think came out in either early 86 or late 85. I should have pulled it, but it has that boring background like Waiting for the Sun does. I'm assuming that Waiting for the Sun and uh, Strange Days probably came out at the same time. And, uh, oh boy, what's the one album that came out in 69? God, brain crisis. You know, the one that's got uh, Touch Me on it. You know what I'm talking That came out even later. So we have Doors L.A. Woman. It came out. I think this particular copy might have a, a made in the... No, no, this has a West German. The inserts were printed in West Germany. Here's another one that looks like that. Doors Morrison Hotel. This came out in 84. Same design. Um, in fact, both of these have the newer Electra logo. Because if we look back here, the first Doors album's got the old Electra logo. I don't see any rhyme or reason why one CD has the old Electra logo and these other Doors CDs have the new logo. Some of this just doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. Maybe someone knows. Maybe it was someone who was doing the graphics. I really have no idea. Ernest, Ernesto, how are you? I'm doing good. Soft Parade, exactly. That came out even later. I think that came out, what? God, 87, 88? I don't know why Soft Parade got a late release, but it did. Do any of you know? Do you guys remember, any of you guys remember Ice Magazine back in the day? That was like the Bible. We'd get like an Ice Magazine. We'd go to, there was a, a CD store in Columbus called uh, For the Record. And they were, where they stocked like all the Beatles CDs when they first came out. But they also used to stock Ice Magazine. Now Ice Magazine was the Bible. Me and my, me and my buddy Keith, yeah, Ernesto, you know what I'm talking about. We used to go to the store and pick up the Ice Magazine every month because this is how we knew what was com coming out. This was pre-internet. It was so, I loved it. In fact, I still have some of my old Ice Magazine somewhere and they are just a blast to go through because really, there is so much knowledge in those that, you know... It's just incredible stuff. But yeah, I miss those days. Man. Let's look at something else. Um, oh boy, got to hit the right button. Um, let's look at... Let's look at the Cars. The Cars, one of my favorite bands of all time, was also one of these bands that were all on Target CDs. Now, you guys can probably guess which CD of those original albums, other than Door to Door, probably didn't come out as a Target. I think Warner Brothers are probably looking, you know, what CDs really were good sellers, and that's what they determined. So, 
um, Panorama didn't come out until, God, I think 88, 89, maybe. Um, but anyway, the first Cars album, as you can see, it's got the old logo, red background with a silver target, made in West Germany, uh, inserts made in West Germany, typical, typical Electra. Let's go to another one. Now look at this. The Cars Candia. Like I said, there's no rhyme or reason. It's got the newer Electra logo. You know these came out pretty similarly. I mean, we're talking a three-year, two-year span here. But it's got, as opposed to this, it's just a two-color. Candio is a three-color. Black text, gray target, and yeah, it's a three color uh, disc. How weird is that? Let's look at another one. Um, let's go back to. Did I do Shake It Up yet? Oh, let's do Shake It Up. And now, okay, so we've got the cars, we've got Candia, which is a three color, and we go to Shake It Up. And we're back to that two-color design. And best to my research, I think the car CDs all came out in 84. I mean, I don't know. Everything's all real, you know. It's other than color, any sound difference. Not to my knowledge. Uh, the Fleetwood Mac rumor CD. And I know Donald Fagan. Now, if you think, I know that when the first Fleetwood Mac CD came out, people were really complaining about the sound. And when Donald Fagan Nightfly, Nightfly, Nightfly came out, say that freaking shit fast, people were bitching about it. So I know that those two were remastered. I don't have the remasters. They are, are all targets, but I don't think they were that much different. I don't think the colors had anything to do with sound. It's just what they were doing. Um, but it's just funny how they used the logos and everything. So shake it up. It's got the old logo. Let's look at Heartbeat City. Heartbeat City, which is like the last record. It's got the old Electra logo, but the back of the CD has the new Electra logo. And printed in West Germany. I don't know if you can see that. Printed in West Germany. It doesn't have any European catalog numbers. Smooth sided jewel case. Literally, whenever I've looked in the bins and I see a Cars Heartbeat City with a smooth sided jewel case, it's either going to be a Target CD or a Made in Japan. Now, the Made in Japan Heartbeat City has a boring Electra graphic. It's just a red. You've seen that old Electra graphic. It's red and black, boring, just text. It's not cool like this. I don't care about the uh, Japanese ones. Some Japanese you have this on 8-track. Ernesto, what do you not have on 8-tracks? Really what I want to know. But anyway, let's look at some more. While we're doing this, what the hell? Now this is kind of a rare one. Uh, the Rolling Stones. Still Life. This was on... Back in the day, if you remember, Rolling Stone was distributed for a time period on Warner Brothers. This was out, let's see, the inserts on this were printed in West Germany. Smooth sided jewel case. There's the CD again. And the Rolling Stone records, this is the only variation of this. It was yellow background with a red target with the tongue, I you know, the tongue logo right there. These weren't out very long because they changed distribution to CBS. You've seen the CBS version of this. 
Now I think it's Virgin or whatever, but there's not many of these around. And the Rolling Stone records were the only ones that looked like this. Hell yeah, yeah, you're right. You're missing a lot of eight tracks. Well, you seem to have a lot. Okay, so anyway, Rolling Stone's still life. You don't see these very often. No, you never see these, but like I said, look for that smooth-sided jewel case. How about this? Sammy Hagar VOA. This is the only Sammy Hagar am I, that I believe came out as a Target CD back in, what, this came out in 84? This came out when the, well, when it was released. And the Geffen CDs always have this color scheme. Geffen's got the silver background with the gray target and gray text. They're just two colors. I don't think I've ever seen another one in a different color scheme. Quarter Flash, Peter Gabriel, Security. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head Geffen CDs that look like this. It's all I can come up with, but there you go. Look for this smooth jewel, frosted jewel, frosted jewel case. Let's look at something else. Pretenders. Here we're looking at Sire. Now I've got two different ones here. Um, the first one we're looking at is the West German polygram pressing. The Sire CDs always had a yellow background with a red target. Uh, based on all my research, of course, you know, this record came out in 1980, but the CD got released in 85. It must have been early 85 because it still has that mirror band around the CD. I don't know how accurate that date is. I mean, we're just talking, if you can see it, there's a mirror band. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it right here. So it's probably early 80s. You know, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a great CD. This CD sounds great because it's not futzed with it all. When we were younger, we used to change the prices of the import CDs back in the day to a lower price. I'm sure you... I don't remember doing that. Funny story for another day. Well, Ernesto, when we do the Friday night chat, you should bring that up. Just saying. Let's look at another one. All right, like I said, I have two Pretender CDs. Well, I've got more than that. Here is the Japanese Target CD. So it is just a lavender target just one 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 color silver background it's just one color it just says made in japan and i think let me see where this was pressed this looks like a denon made at the denon factory now that's a whole other show where you can read the numbers on the inside and find out where this was pressed but that looks like it was denon pretty sure 100% sure. I know what I'm talking about. All right, let's look at another one. Uh, okay, this is a good one. Anybody like craft work? This is kind of a rare CD. You don't see these very often. But this is a Made in West Germany by Polygram. Craft, craft work, computer world. On the Warner Brothers label. And like I told you, these Warner Brothers CDs are usually always silver with the red. Unless you see some kind of weird misprint, which I've seen it, where it'll be like the opposite. Or they'll print this and they won't print the black. There's some weird variations, but those are very rare. Smooth-sided jewel case. Inserts printed in West Germany. It's great stuff. 
see what more comments. You know, there's going to be a test after this. Here's the question. Pressing plants better in Japan than USA? Well, based on the plants during this era, I don't see any different. Those polygram pressings are thick. And those originals, those original J Japanese pressings are thick. Now everything is all pressed in Mexico. They got rid of all the pressing plants. You might find something pressed in the United States, but if you buy like a new CD, if it's like on Universal, most of those are pressed in Mexico and they're thin. All the ones I've ever bought play okay. I, I, I've never seen like an issue with it, but um, the quality is not the same as those old Japanese, those old West German CDs. You got Autobahn lately? Was it one of these? I mean, you never see... You never see these, the West German versions ever. And if you look on eBay or look on Discogs, they're usually pretty expensive. Because think about it. In 1985, how many people were buying Kraftwerk on CD? I don't think Kraftwerk ever really sold in the United States. Maybe I'm off on that, but no. But keep your eye out. out. You might find one. You never know. You know, that's what I keep saying. It's the thrill of the hunt. You never know what you're going to find. Um, here's a weird one. Now, most of the Prince CDs all came out as targets, except maybe first album, second album. Sign of Times was too late. Um, trying to think. Around the World in a Day was kind of a weird one. Let me show you that. It kind of goes against the grain of all the Warner Brothers CDs. It is just a silver disc with mint green printing. And this came out in 85. The Japanese versions of this did not look like this. They had the more of the modern day look. If you ever see Around the World in a Day, they don't look like this. This was probably only a short time. If you guys remember, back in the day when Around the World in the Day came out, it came in a cardboard digipack. Well, this one I bought, it had the cardboard digipack, but it was just trashed. So I just put it in a regular jewel case. I mean, this is better than the, the jewel pack, you know, all day long. Um, but yeah, this is the only one that I know of that ever looked like this. Every now and then you can find these, but I haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah, Ernesto, you don't see many of craft work at all. Let's look at... Uh, oh, here's one. Uh... uh Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I don't know if you guys like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, but pictures at an exhibition was like one of the... This and Greatest Hits were like the only two Emerson, Lake, and Palmer CDs that came out as Target CDs. And they were purple with black. So they were only a two-color, made in West Germany by Polygram. And the cotillion ones are the ones that are purple and black the other Atlantic ones are like the foreigner ones where they're red with the green background these were purple and black weird and this is a later one it doesn't have that silver band around it so I'm thinking this is from 87 I don't know crazy but like I said, the certain labels had certain colors. Now, so when I first started getting into CDs, it was all classical music and CDs were expensive. Yeah, you're talking like 85, 86. But the thing is that musically, and they would have, like I said, the, the 
the CD bin was probably six foot by four foot. And like one side had a lot of classical CDs and the other side was like pop and soul and all that. I mean, there was hardly anything you could buy. I mean, like I said, I bought Duran Duran Rio and I bought Hall & Oates Big Bamboon. And I think back then, CDs might have been like $18.99 or 20 bucks. So think about how much, how expensive that would have been back then. I have Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits, and that was Maine, Japan, and it looks like a snowflake, yeah. If you go through the cheapy bins, you can find those a lot. Because don't forget, Brothers in Arms sold like you wouldn't believe. You can find those all day. I bet your uh, CD probably has a smooth-sided jewel case, too. It's probably frosted. Check it and let me know, but I bet you it does. Let's look at another one. Here, like I was just talking about the Geffen CDs. Here's the first Asia album. Uh, based on my research, I think this came out in 1983. I don't think that the West German ones came out in 83. I think the original Japanese version, you know, it'll say made in Japan by CSR on the inner plastic hub. Uh, this says made in West Germany by Polygram. I'm thinking this might have came out in 84. Uh, inserts. Inserts say made in West Germany on this one. Again, smooth sided jewel case. I mean, it's a. I'm just like, I sound like a broken record. But anyway, all those Geffen ones, I've never seen a variation. Someone's may maybe have seen a variation of this, but I've never seen it. Let's look at here's another Geffen one. Peter Gabriel Security uh, came out in 1984. Of course, this record came out in '82. Yeah, inserts printed in West Germany, frosted jewel case, same design, kids, same design. Here's one, Echo and the Bunnymen. This one you don't see too much because it's got the European, this is the European design. You could maybe get these as imports, but always the European WEA CDs always had that teal background with the purple target, which I love the way these look. Also says Made in West Germany by Polygram. Um, yeah, this doesn't have a smooth sided jewel case, but you just have to look at them. Once you get your eye trained to know what certain pressings are, there are websites out there that list all these target CDs and you can do your own research and what to look for. But I mean, if you like the thrill of the hunt, these are always fun to look for. Uh, let's look at this. Here is Lindsey Buckingham on Electra. Again, you never know what you're going to get. This is Lindsey Buckingham Go Insane from 1984. This CD came out when this record came out. You got the red background, silver target. This is a three color with black text. New new logo all the ones with the new logo have black text but i have seen misprints where they just did the two color with no black and it looks really bizarre because underneath the black printing is silver so they printed red silver and black last but i wish i had an example and i wish i would have kept that cd i may have one in there who knows but anyway lindsey buckingham uh the inserts in here, printed in West Germany. Here's a weird one. Uh, back in the early days, they used to do like, this is called the Digital Domain, a demonstration disc. This was created to um, test your stereo equipment. 
It's crazy how CDs are like tapes. Interesting. They're making a comeback. Oh, I thought, well, maybe. Well, I don't know, Ernest, if they're making a comeback, but I think if you give it some time, buy all these CDs that you can now because it's going to come back around. I swear to God, when this young group of kids grow up and they see discs and they go, oh my God, look at this. I can actually play audio off of here. It's going to be a revolution. It's going to be a whole what goes around comes around. But anyway, this is a demonstration CD. So, you know, back in the day, um, stereo systems, they would make these demonstration CDs so you could test your stereo. Because don't forget, the dynamic range on a CD is infinite. And you were back in the day, you were limited by vinyl because, you know, they take vinyl and they compress it down so it doesn't, you, you can play a track and the bass won't pop your needle off the record. Well, on a CD, you're not limited by that. You can just go to town. So this is like a test CD. Um, and it's got this little insert that's in here. Um, because of the extreme dynamic range on this disc, use your volume control with extra caution. The nature sounds in this opening section are in internationally, uh, oh, wait a minute, uh, are presented in their natural softness, but followed by loud jet aircraft taking off. So they don't want you to blow up your speakers if you're testing this. It's just funny. So anyway, this is like a test CD. I mean, you'll see these every once in a while. And don't forget that they also made a non-target version of this later. But this is on Electra, and it's got that damn old logo, too. You never know what you're going to see. Um, what else? Let's look at this. Did I already show you guys this? Did I already talk about Morrison Hotel? I did. We already saw that. We saw that. We saw Doors, L.A. Woman. Let's look at some Eagle CDs. Um, here's Eagle's Hotel California. The Asylum label, which I think this is a beautiful color scheme. You've got a periwinkle background with the purple target. And like usual, this, is, this one doesn't say Made in West Germany by Polygram. This one just says Made in West Germany along the bottom. But these Asylum CDs are absolutely beautiful. And like I said, it's got the European catalog number. This doesn't have a smooth-sided jewel case, but it does have a European catalog number. And you know how these record companies worked. They would use up all their inserts first before they would ever print more. So some of these non-target CDs would have European catalog numbers on them. You just basically have to go in the bin, pop them open, and pop them open and see what they are. Hotel California only came out as a target CD. The Japanese version of it is boring. Boring. You don't want that. In the future, they're going to find a landfall of Taylor Swift CDs. God, I can wholly hope so. So that's Hotel California. Let's look at another Eagles. So Hotel California has got the old Asylum logo. We've got the long run. This one says Made in West Germany by Polygram. It's got the same logo, periwinkle background with the, the purple target. Beautiful, I love it. Eagles Greatest Hits. Now, you guys know you can go out to the bins and you find Eagles Greatest Hits all flipping day. What, is this like the number one best selling, best selling record on the planet? This one says uh, Made in West Germany by Polygram. Old Asylum logo, Periwinkle with purple. I never, ever see these. Have you guys ever seen any of these before? 
I haven't. My long run and harvest look exactly like yours, but harvest should be a silver, silver background with red target. Should be. Like I said, I've seen some misprints. Um, let's look at some Genesis. And I'm about done. I only pulled so many. It took me like a thousand years to get these graphics together. Genesis. Now this is an Atlantic CD, like I told we talked about. Teal background with red target. Like I said, all the Atlantics look like this. Um, and this is a later one. It doesn't have that silver band around the edge. So this is probably 85, I'm guessing. It says made in West Germany by Polygram. This, though, however, has inserts pre printed in the United States. So as you keep going later, so by 85, it's not surprising that you start seeing inserts that are printed in the United States. So being that the inserts say printed in USA, I would guess this is a 1985 version. Let's look at uh, Brian Ferry. This is kind of interesting. Now, Ernesto, you were talking about different masterings or different song quality. These are two CDs that have the exact same, I believe they have this exact same catalog number. No, they have a different catalog number, but they were made at the same factory during the same era. So we've got Brian Ferry Boys and Girls, uh, made in West Germany by Polygram. This came out in 85. This has the mirror banding around the uh, edge, so I'm thinking this is early 85. I, I don't remember when this was released in 85, but this CD came out when this record came out. Here's the uh, cover art. Take note because the cover art on this is different than this other one. So look at this. And look at this. Totally different. Now. Both of these CDs came out of the same factory at the same time. So we've got this. This is the European version of it. So this came out on EG. This one's Warner Brothers EG. Same, if you look at the mirror banding on this, it's the same catalog number. It's just different printing, and it, the CDs sound exactly the same. It's just different. It's just different silk screening. Which one do I like better? Well, I don't know. I think, hmm, we go back and forth, back and forth. I like this better. What else do I? I think that's it. That's it in a nutshell. But I have a whole bunch more. Target CDs. I mean, there are probably other people that more uh, know their shit better than I do, but it all started with me, folks. I'm just saying. Patting myself on the back. Anybody have any questions or anything while uh, I've got you here? What's it, 804? We've been going for an hour. I didn't know I could talk about this stuff so long. But yeah, the whole thing is, it's just fun to go through the bins and see if you can find these. You still find them. The last one I bought, because I had, like I said, I had a whole bunch back in the day and then I sold them. But I did find that Stevie Nicks Belladonna one recently for like four bucks. So if I always see them in the bins, I just buy them. But uh, I don't know. It's just fun. What, what, what am I going to do? But... That's it. That's all I got, unless somebody has any questions or anything. I don't know. I think we, uh, I think I discussed it. But it's fun. I still like it. What can I say? Well, if no one has any more questions, I'm going to sign off. Um, I appreciate you for tuning in. Um, 
happy target CD finding. You know, if you like to do that stuff. I mean, you think after all these years I get tired of it, but no, I like the thrill of the hunt. It's just so much fun. So I hope you learned something. Um, now I have to put all these away. It's not going to be good. Um, so everybody have a good night. I'll catch you later. Uh, there's more stuff coming up on the channel. Um, tomorrow night, uh, Todd Evans and I are doing our Matthew Sweet episode. We're going to be looking at Girlfriend and Altered Beast. That's what's really coming up. I, uh, if I could only look at my calendar that's on laying on the floor. Um, other than that, I don't think I have anything. Oh, like how many CDs do I own? Like CDs in total? Well, if I had another camera, I could take a picture of all of them. I'm going to say probably, I don't know, three to 4,000 maybe. I don't know. I'm old. I could have a, sh a crap load. Good show. Grant enjoyed it. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. I'm trying to be entertaining. I'm trying to educate some people on this stuff. Yes, yes. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to sign off. You guys have a good evening, and uh, I'll see you guys later. All right. Good night.